What's up and welcome to our podcast, Toast to Tea. We're two friends that love the world of celebrity and pop culture and talking about it with you. To join our world of celebrity, make sure to rate, like, and subscribe to our podcast. Now hit it. It's about that time. Wait, where's the Chris Cam? To say cheers to our world of celebrity. 1,000%. They're back together and it feels just right. Miss Mika, Mika, nice, nice to meet ya. Raise your glass. I'm Madison Hill. And I'm Courtney Revolution. Because it's our moment to toast to tea. tea. Yes, hello, Courtney. Hello, hello. Hi, Madison. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living for the dance. I'm living Thank for you. the dance. Thank you. Just a little, a little shimmy bop. A little shimmy shimmy. And I love the Taylor merch. Living for Thank that you. as well. I got my first ever Taylor package. <laughs> oh, for the era store. On yes. Okay. I gagged. They sent cookies, popcorn, this hoodie, a t-shirt, a water <laughs> bottle, two inflatable 22 balloons, and a blanket. Oh, my God. Uh, that's actually a score. Taylor, meet us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love her. Literally. Taylor, please, please, please give us a call. You know we are big Swifties. Actually, Courtney, that's what bonded us initially was yeah. our love of Taylor Swift. A love of Taylor, the mm -hmm. Swift. She's an icon, you know, a songwriter that is one of the voices of our generation, in my opinion. Oh, one million percent. We're like a month away from her album, right? Yep. It, well, even less. April 19th. Less? Mm-hmm. Hey! And it's not it's not lost on me. I, is April 19th tourist season or is that still? Uh, when does tourist season officially? I know I'm April 24th, so it has to be close. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. I'll look it up. Look up, look up when tourist season officially starts. Because if Taylor specifically chose to do this during tourist season, that should be another Easter egg. That means she is coming for the neck of Joe Alwyn, which I'm, we already know I'm she is. Girl, Google is not working, girl. Not this. okay. Let's okay. Just, I'm just gonna say it's tourist <laughs> season that she's Period. launching That's it fine. during tourist season because Queen. that just makes me love it even more. Me. It's going to be a good I'm album. I have, I have really good feeling about it just because we don't know anything about it. it. There's not much to tease. So like I'm going into it so far with just like just open expectation, you know? Oh, no, absolutely. I feel like just the track list alone is giving tea. Like and we're going to have a lot. I know. You know I oh, love sorry. some house, I, just, I just probably burst everyone's eardrums. <laughs> I am so excited for that. I feel like mm. it's going to be great. I love a tea moment. Not to completely come out of left field, but can I just make the quick announcement that The Circle is coming back on April 16th? Oh, yes. I saw Holly post that. Girl. I'm very excited. <laughs> um, I hope y'all are very excited as well, community. Uh, the Circle's coming back, y'all, April 16th. They taped it in Atlanta, Georgia this time. Well, I don't know wow. if it's Atlanta, but it's definitely Georgia. Um, and so actually, know, that's not too surprising. I feel like a lot of productions take place in Atlanta, actually. Yeah, yeah. I feel like my friends have filmed a couple shows in Atlanta because it's like okay. good tax breaks and smart in Georgia. Tyler Perry got that whole entertainment industry together. He knows what's going on, girl. You know, I don't. I just talk trash about the TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I live for it. <laughs> you know, I'm re, re watching Real Housewives of Atlanta and they all live, laugh, love Tyler Perry. They're obsessed. Madison. Did you see? Do you watch Potomac or not like that? Okay. I saw one Karen Huger? Was, yes. She was arrested on a DUI, right? Girl, y'all, Karen Huger done got her ass arrested. Karen Huger from Real Housewives of Potomac driving under the influence. And I, she said in a statement um, that she was driving under the influence because she was grieving the loss of her mother who passed away in 2017, I believe. Um, and I don't think that that's a good excuse. And I want to just say, I love, Karen Huger is probably like one of my favorites on Real Housewives she, of Potomac. Okay. So I'm disappointed. I love Potomac because Potomac is one of those that you just turn on. Like when you turn on Bravo, it's always going and you get sucked in because you're like, yes. the tea. Like, I feel like it's a very underrated franchise because they do very go for underrated. the jugular. They go for the jugular. And so when I saw that, I was so upset. I was like, oh no. And then I've been seeing memes of like everybody putting compilations together of all the housewives and their mug shots. Like Tinsley's up there, oh. Countess Luann is up there, Miss Shannon is up <gasps> there. Like everyone who's ever had legal trouble is like, Teresa wasn't up there, which is interesting. But everyone who's had legal trouble had like, it was like a meme of all the mug shots of the housewives and now she was up there. Oh, and I was like, oh Lord. no. 
I couldn't I believe bad. it. I couldn't believe it. Um, I'm disappointed, but I hope that this just teaches people a lesson that it doesn't really matter what you're going through. There's no really, there's no excuse to be uh, driving under the influence. So be careful and take care of yourselves, y'all. Yeah, no. I mean, Uber is a thing for a reason. You know what I mean? You know, I'm and the Uber King like, girl. Yes. Oh, I know. You really are. But I feel like sometimes public figures feel like, oh, if I get in a car, someone's going to say something and call and da 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 Still not worth it. Like, just. Yeah, no. Nah. I mean, because now look at it. Now this has become a huge It's, it's thing. now a thing. Now this will be a storyline on the next season. They're going to call you a drunk. They're going to say your wig is cheap. They're going to say, like, you know what I mean? They're going to call her a boozo or the clown. And I don't want that I for the grand dame. I don't. I love her. I love the grand dame. Not boozo the clown. <laughs> That's what they're going to call her. Madison, <laughs> they're going to call Karen Huger boozo the clown. And I, I'm not here for that. That's my grill. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is, Giselle going okay. get her. That is that is a funny nickname, though. <laughs> Not that I, I condone your faith being made fun of, but you just gave so much ammunition. That is hilarious. Sharice, don't <laughs> listen to that. Sharice, don't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite? Okay, I know Atlanta is your favorite ha- mm-hmm. Housewives franchise. Yes, Wait, ma'am. Is Potomac too? Uh, do you, um, n- Yes. Okay. Yes. Potomac is no, two. No, 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 no. Beverly Hills is two. Beverly okay, Hills. I was like. I was trying. Not, I'm. Re- I have to judge it, not counting both of those franchises' current seasons, which are garbage. No shade. Um yes. But if we look at it longevity wise, I really longevity enjoy wise. Potomac because I've always loved uh, Paris Hilton's family, and I that was why I started watching was Kyle Richards. Okay, for Beverly Hills, which mm-hmm. I actually saw a report earlier this week that is claiming Kyle and Mauricio, I want to hear your thoughts about this because you Mm -hmm. are the PR master, (laughs) that Kyle and Mauricio are basically drawing out their separation and not filing for divorce Mm -hmm. and exploiting the separation for professional gain because they know it makes more sense for their reality shows to drag out the separation than just file for divorce and end things officially. Madison, I want to go on record. I wish I could just go back in time and pull out a clip because I've said on TikTok Live before that although I'm sad that Kyle and Mauricio are separating, it makes so much sense for them to do so like financially. Like if they're going to separate, like do it in a way that benefits the both of them. So like we get Kyle's point of view on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and, you know, maybe we don't like that point of view or we're not getting enough tea, which will then lead us to hear Mauricio's point of view over at Netflix on buying Beverly Hills, which every time a clip of that show comes out now, it's they're mm-hmm. like it's like going viral. There's so much conversation. So like I wouldn't doubt that. And it makes yeah. sense. Um if they both agree to it and it's not hurting either's feelings like that, hey, they're both keeping the job. It. Yeah. I know. I mean I it, it makes me feel a little bit icky just because mm. I feel like their separation has rocked me for some reason. <laughs> Because they were you never always, expect like, that. They were always that couple. You know what I mean? Like on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, everyone was kind of a mess, but like they were Kyle and Mauricio. Yeah. So then to hear that like we've now gotten to the point that y'all are exploiting the separation, I'm just like, I I thought you guys were separate. I thought you were reality fired. stars like, you know, exploit, girl. I know. That's why I could never do it. Like what that. What you mean? Like, oh, on that no level, way I could exploit a like a 27 year marriage. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I think it's also easier because I'm fully now on team. She's dating Morgan Wade and no one can tell me different. I watched the reunion. I'm so sorry. They're dating. Is it giving Chriselle and G Flip? No, because Chriselle and G Flip, I'm obsessed with them. They're they're in love. They're so in love. They are in love. And I feel like that is the person Chriselle's been waiting for when I look at Kyle and Morgan. I don't feel that same love between them. I feel like oh. it's a a mo. It's like a moment. You know what I mean? Mm. Whereas Chrishell and you saying it's Kim Kim Zolciak and uh, DJ yes. whatever her name was. Yes. Uh, what was her name? <laughs> Amy uh, some, or whatever. And DJ Sam something. or something like that. DJ Tracy. Sam, DJ yes. Tracy. 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 I just rewatched it. I should know. But it's, <laughs> it's very much giving Kim Zolciak and Tracy, not Chrishell and Jacob <laughs> at all. Silly. In my opinion, I'm like, okay, Kyle. <laughs> Okay. Which, you know, I think she was looking for an emotional affair. She got one. I do mm. think it's escalated. But do I think, like, her and Morgan are soulmate level like Rochelle and Jacob? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
I don't. To be honest, I have not watched enough of this season to be giving a, an educated. Okay, I watched um, the whole season, so you yeah. you watch it and then you tell me what you think, and then watch the okay. reunion and watch that woman's body language, and you tell me what you think. Because I I am like mm-mm. I, I she's think, just not into her, Madison. Is that what you're I trying think, to say? Well, I think I think Kyle is really into Morgan. Do mm. I? I just feel like Kyle's a little more into it than Morgan. Mm. Whereas, like you know, when you see Chrishell and G Flip, we've been oh, around they're, them. Oh, they're madly we've been in love. Them. Yeah, they are madly in love. love. Mm. They're in love. Like uh, when wow. I see them together, I'm like goals. Like they are literally obsessed with each other. I'm yeah. not getting that. Which, granted, maybe Kyle and Morgan, it's a little bit different. They're you know, Kyle's not legally divorced, but Morgan don't, I don't want know. all the smoke from the Bravo fans. Yeah, so maybe it's a little <laughs> bit different, but I don't know. It's some tea, and we need to keep an eye on it. I'm just telling Ooh. you right now. Right now. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the tea oh, recordings. We have a okay, lot to get into. We got our caffeine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, kicking things off with Ice Spice and Kanye West and this new body fiasco. Because fiasco is just one way to describe it. So you guys, yes, Kanye has had the collab new body featuring Ty Dolla Sign and Nicki Minaj in the vault since 2018. And after having Nicki write multiple verses of the song and having fans beg Kanye to release it, obviously, ugh, no luck, she decided to not clear her verse for Kanye's newest album. Nicki is going to be Nicki, you know what She I mean? don't got time for Vincent, that. Exactly. I honestly respect it because it's like, you've been jerking me around since 2018. I'm over And she's in the it. middle of promoting her album, Madison. Thank you. Exactly. She is booked and busy. She does not time for Kanye's little antics. Now, obviously, since then, it's been revealed by one of Kanye's former employees, Yes Jules, in a leaked text message that the song has since been sent to both Ice Spice and Doja Cat to see which artist fits the song best. Mm. However, after the text leaked, Kanye posted to social media that now Ice Spice's team is refusing to clear her verse in the song. It's assumed that Doja passed on it. That We don't know that for sure. But the fact that Ice Spice is now saying, I'm not clearing my verse, tells me Doja said absolutely not. Both the Barbs and the Swifties have been dragging Ice Spice on social media for this shady move. This alleged shady move, you guys. You know, we don't know for sure. Um, what do we think, Courtney? What do we think? I'm confused. <laughs> it feels it feels like a lot of mess. And it feels like, once again, Kanye is the ringmaster causing all this drama amongst all these women. And I'm like, yeah. why are we fighting over Kanye? I'm over I it. Don't, I, first of all, for, let me say this. The new body version that we deserve has been out since forever. If you want to hear it, y'all, we can go right on YouTube, hear it, download it, SoundCloud, what have you. Um, my confusion is why Ice Spice would even consider submitting a verse knowing how closely aligned she is with Taylor Swift, who basically like brought her on the tour and you know, had her remix, like the, con- like, you know what, Taylor Swift have, has given her so much platform. And then on the opposite side of that, over in Hip Hopville, girl, you're also Nicki Minaj's daughter. She done gave you music, Barbie collab, this, that, and the third. Grammy had it, snatched it back. And now you're going to go and work with Kanye. I'm confused. I'm confused. Um, And Isis, you know, I love you down. Shout out to Riot. Um, But the way it's being perceived she would deserve these lashings because it right. just looks funny. The it's giving Megan good. and Wop. It's giving yeah. Megan Wop. Yeah, you know? the optics in Ice Spice's favor are not are not good. And I will yeah. say, you know, Taylor is such a mature individual. I feel like she would be like, okay, I understand business is business. I thought that initially, mm. but then on the flip side of that, I'm like, but I feel like Taylor, Kanye and Tim is like where she does draw a pretty harsh line. I like, agree. She mentioned it again in the Time article. Like, she's not over it. They have not apologized. Like, she's not... Like, Brittany Mahomes doing the Skims campaign, I think, is one thing. Ice Spice, mm-hmm. like, actively working with Kanye and giving him verses, allegedly. Allegedly. Is, is a whole other level, I feel like, of kind of going behind her back. You know Ugh. what I mean? And same with Nicki Minaj. I did all of this for you, and then you're going to go and write verses for this song that you know has been a point of contention since forever. Madison. You know? Can I ask you in the community something? Hi, community. Hi, listeners. 
Uh, do we think it's possible that before we all as the public found out that Nikki did not clear the verse for New Body, that it was sent to Ice Spice and Doja Cat? Like, maybe they thought they would also be on the song with Nikki? Because then it would make sense. Doja Cat would pass because it's alleged right. that Doja Cat passed on Cowgirl on the album because right. she believes Nikki doesn't like her. And then Ice Spice loves Nikki, so why not be on the song? But you don't right? think she would have double checked that with Nikki? Like, Fair. Hey, Great point. I just got this. So mm-hmm. you're going to be on this too? Like, it's going to be all three of us? Like, I just feel like that would be a really risky assumption. And you know what they say when you assume? Hello, mm-hmm. clearly what's happening right now. So hmm. I feel like that would have been a risky assumption. I feel or like it could have been, been discussed confirmed. with managers yeah. even maybe, you know? Yeah. I just maybe like, maybe it's not as black and white, but maybe it is. Yeah. I feel like, well, whatever <laughs> is going on right now is not good in Ice Spice's favor. So it ain't looking good, to, sis. No. So she's going to have to come out and clear the air because the Swift, if there are two fan bases who you do not want to piss off, the Swifties and the Barbs, are you kidding me? Yes. Like, if the Swifties and the Barbs were in Congress, we would have no more national debt. All of our problems would be solved. Like, those are the two fan bases you are not trying to upset. And to have both of them on your neck. Oh. It's not looking I, good, Ice. Courtney, I literally can't even imagine. Like, that I, sounds terrifying. Not <laughs> the best move, but l- like you said, maybe Ice Spice will come out and clear it up. I, she needs to, because if not, if you think they're going to let this go, are you kidding me? No one holds a grudge so. like a Swifty and a Barb. Okay? Just no that. No that. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Miss Beyonce. I'm so freaking excited. She unveiled the new covers <laughs> for her album, Cowboy Carter. Um, on the cover, we see Beyonce is traded in her diamond horse, Renee, for a classic white stallion. She's dressed rodeo style. She appears to be holding the American flag. Like, she just looks absolutely fabulous. Mm-hmm. And she posted a really lengthy caption kind of telling us what we can expect, how much work has gone into the album. She's been working on this for over five years. She said it was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed, and it was very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive, which, Courtney, is kind of what you were saying when she announced this country era, mm-hmm. that she was kind of taking it back. So she you were spot on. Um, she also did tease that there's going to be some surprises on the album. Who do you think we're going to get? Madison. I don't know. Beyonce is specifically saying that it's not a country album. This is a Beyonce album means that the door is open to anybody and everybody. Um, Maybe people we don't even expect. Of course, you know, I would love to hear, uh, you know, like a Taylor Swift, you know, our, you know, our people that we would expect to hear maybe on a country Beyonce album, but maybe not. Maybe she gonna have Dolly Parton on there. Which would be equally iconic. You know? I, I'm personally hoping for a Taylor Swift collab because mm-hmm. I feel like the media loves to pit them against one another all the time. And I think it would be, even though they very clearly support one another, but nobody's brain cells work when it comes to two women supporting each other. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. God forbid, two of the most powerful women in music actually support one another. Let's keep making them go against one another. So I feel like it would be iconic to kind of shut that narrative down with a collab once and for all. Mm. But I also would be cool with her, you know, doing a Dolly Parton or doing another classic country artist. I don't know. Or, or like sampling pop- like a really popular country I, song. Yes. I honestly feel like the possibilities are truly, truly endless. Like, who's going to say no to working with Beyonce? Literally, you think she's going to have Darius Rucker? I would do Darius Rucker, Jelly Roll. I would mm. be here for a Jelly Roll moment. Um, really... Again, I feel like she could be, and who knows, not all of the artists might even be country. They could be from different genres. We don't even yeah, know. Yeah, actually. We don't even know what she's cooking up. The fact that it's been five years in the making, I'm like, okay, so we were working around some very important people's schedules. Yeah, just to five think. Five years? Beyonce has proven that, like, while the rest of us was laying down, girl, during the pandemic, she certainly was working. Hard. Like, you know, some of us was just surviving. Yeah. Beyonce was probably up in her beautiful mansion, purified mm-hmm. air, and just working, working, studying, <laughs> scrolling. Because when she probably was thinking, maybe, speculation, not confirmation, when was she ever going to have another time to just, like, not have responsibilities 
as That's Beyonce true. out in the world having to do stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. She could just Which, be home and do what she wants. To that point, Beyonce and Taylor were really two of the artists who worked during COVID. Yes, ma'am. Then, to your point, Taylor put out mm-hmm. two albums. Beyonce was working on some magic we didn't even know was going to bless our ears. <sighs> like, honestly, when you look at it, they did take that time to put in the work. So I'm just still going to use that as fueling the fire of a possible Taylor Beyonce collab. It, Madison, you honestly might be right. I would love that. I'm here. I for honestly it. would love that. It would make the stands go crazy, but I'm, and I'm Courtney, here for that too. I can't wait for this because you know how you guys don't even know how many arguments Courtney and I used to get in at our old office about Beyonce versus Taylor Swift when people would be sitting up there trying to tell us that Taylor copies Beyonce and all oh, of this. I mean, please. Courtney and I would get in heated arguments with people, you guys. Yeah. And so I just, I think for me, I think of all those people, Courtney, and I'm like, can you imagine they're going to be gagged? When and think they, of us. And think of us. And we're going to be laughing. Even though we're not laughing to the bank, we're going to be laughing at least at the karma, okay? <laughs> Period. Exactly that, Madison. I, I would love to see that. Cut us 10%. Percent. Literally cut us 10%. We've been, we've been fighting for you guys. Like, our life depended on it. You don't even know. Because <laughs> it's okay to like both. Like, you know, I don't know why it's, you have to, like, pit those two specifically against yeah. each other, you know? It was always a thing. But that just crossed my mind. I'm like, oh, my God, the arguments we used to get in. LOL, look at him now. Look Selena Gomez. Oh my God, I was watching um, her performance that she had did at that award show where she had the short little... Oh, the uh, bob. Uh, look at it now. Uh-huh. Watch her go. I said, y'all better lay off cell, girl. She was trying her hardest. That's our girl. <laughs> I am dying. We're going to talk about Selena in a little bit. But first, mm. Courtney, we got to get into a little reality TV Oof. update situation also you guys just a trigger warning we're going to be discussing some domestic violence mm-hmm. because a big uh netflix reality story came out this week christine quinn from selling sunset she was the one with the long blonde hair she always brought the drama she was like the most controversial girly on the show when she yes, was ma'am. on um her husband christian was arrested earlier this week for assault with a deadly weapon So according to authorities, Christian tried to throw a bag containing a glass bottle at Christine. It missed her and hit their two-year-old son. Paramedics were called on the scene in addition to police, obviously. The paramedics checked their son out on the scene. He was later transported to the hospital with Christine. Meanwhile, Christian was arrested in a bathrobe and bare feet, looking like a damn mess. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was arrested, like I said, the charges for assault with a deadly weapon. Christine was offered, this is the most up-to-date information, Christine was offered an emergency protection order that will last for seven days. I imagine that gives her time to kind of figure things out for a couple days. Mm. Um, She accepted it, so the protection order covers her and her child. And then also, the last I heard, his bail was $30,000, and he had not posted it yet. Um, That was according to page six. That was the last update they had. But I was just absolutely shocked by this. Madison, it be the men with money. Yes. I could not believe. And then, of course, immediately from the outside looking in, it goes, okay, well, this clearly is just the time that we're hearing about. So what has been going on? Thank you. Did you make Christine leave the show? Like, like you get, like you get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because if you're abusive and you're domestic violent, you ain't gonna want no cameras around. You know, Adam Develo, nosy. Shout out to Adam. He's really yeah. lovely. But you know, them cameras gonna be in there. The producers gonna be asking questions. You get what I'm saying? So why would you want Christine to be on a program with that girl? I could give you everything that you want. That's what mm-hmm. he, I imagine he would say. Like, you know what I mean? Oh no! Um, One that's immediately where my <sighs> mind went. My mind went. This is not the first time. You don't yes. go from zero to throwing glass bottles in one instance of an argument. Mm. And I think it, may, obviously, I'm incredibly sad for her, incredibly Same. sickened that the child was involved in any way. Yeah. But also, too, I'm like, I wonder if this explains a little bit of Christine's defensiveness about her relationship. You know, she was very defensive about him, very defensive about their marriage, did not like people looking in. Yeah. And... Who knows what she's been dealing with, honestly. That man always gave me the ick, I will say. I did not like how he talked about women. I didn't like how he talked about Chriselle, which I, at the time it was easy to write off because it's like, oh, Christine and Chriselle are feuding. Like, he's disappointing yeah. his wife. No, if you go back, any man who speaks about women like that, red flag. My mom always was like, I don't know what it is about him, 
But no. Mama Hill really? was always. Yes. And I will tell you, she can sniff a man like that. Oh, out she wasn't having in it. A, in a crowd. <laughs> the moment yes. he took one toe on the television screen, she was like, uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, and she so was over I, it. Over it. So when I sent her this, she was like, I knew he yeah. always fell off to me. That is crazy. That I feel, slimy rat. That slimy rat. Hopefully, I will say what's the possible positive out of this is now that it's public, maybe now she has more options to protect herself and her child instead of trying to, you know, solve all the problems by herself. It ain't make no sense when she left that goddamn show, Madison. Yeah, but you're right. It ain't make no sense. And remember, she left to do a joint business venture with Mm -hmm. the husband. Yep. Now, what happened to that? Mm Mm-hmm. I hope she And why he ain't post that bail? He ain't got no money no more, Christine? Well, that's also what I was wondering. I was like, that's weird to me because $30,000 for somebody who retired at, you know, 40 from tech and is a multimillionaire, you should, $30,000 should be a drop in the bucket. Why was it taking you so long to post? Something in the buttermilk is not clean. I don't I'm know. I'll tell you right now. I know. I know. Like, th- right away, my alarm bells were like financial issues. Okay. So, I don't know. <laughs> That's obviously alleged. That's pure speculation. Just like my little true crime brain. Like, what is going to cause you to, to throw a bag at, at somebody with a glass in it? And then, and when your kid's around. What's going what's gonna to make you that mad? I Nothing should ever make you that mad, truthfully. No. But I wonder how they got to that point. How it escalated that badly. Yeah. I do not get it. But I'm sketched. I'm sketched out. Something's up. And I think more is going to come out, obviously. Yeah, I need it to because yeah. this is not, I don't like how this sounds, obviously. Um, but this man, I didn't like how they looked when they pulled him out and he was in the row. He just looks stink, greasy, and nasty. Um, yeah. And Christine is beautiful and glamorous and intelligent. So I would like mm-hmm. her to disengage from that loser, please. Oh, absolutely. Oh, the For hand, the fans, hand Christine, hand. we love you. Also, why are you in a bathrobe at 2 p.m.? And no shoes. I just, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, absolutely. If, if, however you felt mm. about Christine in the past, I think it's very easy to be Team Christine in this situation. Team Baby. Hopefully she gets all of the help and support she needs and Christian absolutely. can stay in the dirty bathrobe. And we don't need to Because you know it's again. dirty. Oh, it looked dirty. It was crusty. It mm. was crusty. Just like his heels. I already know they were crusty. I didn't even Not have to the crusty them. heels. I already know. I already know. <laughs> God, Madison. Oh, okay, we're gonna, you know what I mean. You know. Ugh, nothing worse. Nothing worse. Um, we're going to continue the, well, I'm going to still continue trigger warning because also we're going to talk about Drake Bell, Josh Peck, and Dan we Snyder. We into it today. So many updates this week, Courtney. It's mm. crazy. So you guys know there's been a documentary about the dark side of Nickelodeon, Quiet on Set. It's on HBO. Um, it detailed all of Dan Schneider's inappropriate behavior on set, how he was with other female employees, um, kind of went into Amanda Bynes' downfall. And also for the first time ever, we heard Drake Bell's account of his sexual assault by Brian Peck, who was the dialogue coach on Nickelodeon. Really went into his story the first time he's ever told his side of the story. Now, ever since this documentary went out there, now Dan Schneider thought it was his time to speak out. Even though he was asked to participate in the documentary and he declined, he decided to sit down for an interview with the iCarly actor, Bogey. This was Oh, for, the guy that played Tebow? Yes. This was for Hollywood Reporter. And it was the weirdest interview I've seen in a while. Like very clearly at Dan, Sch- someone's home. I assume it was Dan's home. They're sitting like oddly close facing one another. And every time he went to ask a question, Dan Schneider would almost like cut him off mid question and be like, let me just go ahead and stop you there. And I'll go ahead and just give, tell you this. Like it was very giving much PR. It was giving Dan Schneider was prepped on every single question. It was not giving authentic in my opinion. He obviously apologized for his behavior on set. He said he would never do those things now. Um, He also clarified that any inappropriate jokes were not made with the intention of exploiting children. And he tried to say, you know, several eyes saw those jokes before they made it to television. So Hmm. it wasn't just me. 
But even so, in the documentary, they talk about how some of the execs would question some of the jokes and he would like coach the writers to be like, no, 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 it means this. Like, Mm. so I'm like, okay, okay. So he's basically apologizing. He's trying to take accountability without really taking accountability. And then in regards to Drake Bell, I will say Drake Bell did clarify that Dan Schneider was one of the few people who had his back with the Brian Peck situation. Dan Schneider claimed in his interview that he even helped Drake Bell's mom write her speech for the judge for Brian Peck's sentencing. Um, Dan Schneider actually became really emotional when talking about Drake Bell. He really felt for him. Um, He felt bad that when Drake went to court, he saw, you know, Brian Peck's side of the courtroom full of supporters and nobody was supporting Drake Bell. So he did become emotional in that sense. But for me, I still feel like the fact that Dan Schneider was even given a platform on Hollywood Reporter, where it was such like a softball interview after all we learned i'm not i'm not here for it honestly (sighs) madison yes where do i even begin first of all dan schneider need to shut his ass up that's number Mm -hmm. one number two there are so many videos on twitter of these children um you know Ariana Grande, Miranda Cosgrove, et cetera, et cetera, Amanda Bynes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, being very uncomfortable around Dan Schneider. That is like, girl, if you were really that friendly, fatherly figure, they wouldn't be behaving this way, and this documentary would have never been made. Also, something that stood out to me, Madison, um, was the fact that whenever it was, and this is just what I noticed, community, feel free to watch the show for yourself and come up with your own um, conclusion, was that as soon as it was black children blowing the whistle immediately their job was cut or we're seeing online there was the actor that's on wild and out that had the show back in the day on nickelodeon called just jordan he wasn't really cool with dan schneider like that his show was cut it makes me wonder well what happened to symphonique she had the show Lil romeo's sister had the show she's black show was cut so it just seems like if you weren't going along with it to some extent you would lose your job, you lose your future, you would lose your career. And that is so terrifying. Going to Dan Schneider aligning himself with Drake over the Brian Peck stuff. Well, yes, of course you would want to align yourself with the person that's going to blow the, that could potentially blow the whistle on you as well to get as close and close and close as you can, even going as far to help his mom write the speech with, girl, by the way, mom, trash. Um, The dad was on it. Drake like the dad. mom, trash. Mm-hmm. Drake, I'm sorry. Your mom is trash, 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 mm-hmm. trash human being. Because if some, I'm not even a parent, but I'm going to tell y'all right now. I don't care if this is my pet, my child, my my iguana, what have you. If someone is saying, hey, doing this is going to put your child in danger, my child is not going there. She's yeah. an ass. Yeah. Um, I feel for Drake to an extent because he has his own troubles with the law and minors. But mm-hmm. um, Dan Schneider asked me to be in jail. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> All the foot stuff. Even going back to the Amanda show. You remember that skit girl on the Amanda show called Popcorn Pants? And the pants? hot tub? The, the, the popper oh. pants, girl. Yes. Where, th- where they was popping popcorn in the pants, and then they was pouring the sauce down. The kids was pouring the sauce down each other's pants talking about popcorn pants. Dan Schneider, you nasty and stank, and we mm-hmm. don't like your ass, and he needs to go to jail. Yeah. I, I, the fact that, again, he was even able to do this interview and look people in the eye and be like, I'm sorry, and I, I didn't mean anything by it. No. I'm like, that is crazy. That is crazy to me. He needs to sit down with Gail King. You, thank you. And fight for his life. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Thank you. Until that happens, it's not an interview I'm, I'm here for at all. Mm. At all. Um, also, Josh Peck, Courtney, in the midst of all this, he's been getting a lot of hate. Um, for not speaking out publicly and supporting Drake Bell. And I saw his little stupid ass TikTok. Yes. And the two did have a falling out whenever Drake was not invited to Josh's wedding, but they did make up in 2017. Drake has since taken a TikTok to defend Josh. He said that Josh has reached out to him privately. Drake said he's still processing everything, so therefore he doesn't feel like every conversation he has needs to be made public. And Drake said Josh had reached out to him and helped him work through this and that he's been really great. What do we think? Why he put that stink ass TikTok up then? Mm-hmm. I that TikTok rubbed me the wrong way. I've, maybe people are saying, "Oh my god, it was a trend that's going wrong." Ill timed, ill timed. Yeah. I didn't like it. Also, the people from um, 
Ned's Declassified, maybe not all oh, yeah. of them, but the main one. They was up Making there kiki and hee and ha ha and too. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're not bringing your shit back on Paramount+. Plus. Mm-hmm. But iCarly got that. They got theirs. Yep. You're not going to get yours because you're putting that bad juju out in the universe. Uh-uh. And I love Ned's Declassified, but they played themselves on that one. Yeah, that no, line I didn't was like that. just not, not I didn't it. Like that. Not it mm-hmm. at all. Mm-mm. No. No, man. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not here for it. But it makes me it. think, Madison, before we move on, I just want to say it's out of everything that was covered in the series, I've been kind of reading along and I did watch the, at least the first part, girl, because it just made me sick to my stomach. It really makes me feel like even though we as an audience were not involved, it makes me feel like everybody that was ever involved with Amanda Bynes failed her. Oh, one million percent. Because like how how could y'all have allowed this to happen to such a talented young lady, to any child, anybody? How mm-hmm. could y'all allow this to happen and now look where she is? Yeah. It's so disappointing to me. It's so upsetting. I know. I feel for Amanda Bynes. And I mm-hmm. feel like anyone who makes jokes at her expense i'm like it's not cute i agree it's not cute anymore like let's let's let her live in peace honestly and how lucky was miley to have her dad on the disney sets yep right because mm-hmm. anything could have been happening her dad was right on they might not talk today but good old billy but, ray was he certainly was in the cut back in the day he was on that set yep so you're right you're right it'll be interesting to see if anything comes out about disney oh girl you know Girl. That's what I'll be. Mm-hmm. I think it's coming. It's only a matter of time. Only Diddy a matter first, of time. Dan second, Disney next. Disney next. Three big D's. No shade. <laughs> Not being gross. Just saying. It's the three big D's. This it's too it's too ironic not to point out, honestly. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on and talk about Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. So Megan Fox has been all over the headlines this week because she was on Call Her Daddy. And she confirmed that her and MGK did call off their engagement for a period of time. But as far as where they stand now, she kept that close to her chest. She did not reveal. She said, quote, I think that what I've learned from being in this relationship is that it's not for the public consumption. So I think as of now, I don't have a comment on like the status of the relationship. What I can say is that is what I refer to as being my twin soul. And there will always be a tether to him no matter what. Now, Courtney. Hearing that, we now have this new report from Us Magazine, where a source said that MGK and Megan are living separately. They report they did this. I'm like, so, I'm sorry, we are going to have some public consumption. Right after she just said we're not going to have public consumption. Not this. Not me, just like, stir, 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 stir. Call me Paper Joe. Anyway, we... Anyway, girl, we got your tea. (laughs) So, uh, um, as you might be keeping it close to your chest, but we know what's going on now. Shout out to Us Magazine. Um, They're apparently living separately. They are reportedly, like, together, but they made this arrangement so they could have some space. And this insider said that while their relationship has always been up and down, it's, quote, at a low moment right now. It changes every day. And the source even said that Megan has been heard asking her friends to set her up with other people. So who knows what the F is going on, honestly. You know what it is, Madison? Their relationship is falling apart because I'm no longer making Machine Gun Kelly's vegan nachos and cold brew at my old job anymore. So, like, he might wake up grouchy, start, you know, fighting with Megan. Now they, girl, they falling apart. Yep. All he had to do was call somebody. (laughs) I would have whipped up them jackfruit nachos so fast. I was going to say, he should have called you. He should have called me. I would have fixed the relationship like, let me split. (laughs) He don't live far. I'm t- he don't live far. He live right in the neighborhood. He used to come all the time. Um, Megan, we have your tea. Um, you should have just been forthcoming with it because you know we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. Um, and if y'all broke up, it's fine. If y'all are open, it's fine. Um, but also, it's none of our business. But also, I want to know. Um, who do we see Megan Fox dating? I don't know. I feel like she's a very intense individual. Yeah. So, like, at this point, I really can't see her with anyone but MGK because I feel Same. like they match each other's level of intensity. Mm-hmm. And that's why I feel like their relationship, they are so passionate that sometimes I think they borderline toxic. <laughs> that's what, you know what I mean? You have two people who are just, like, so obsessive. It's like, it could go one or two ways. Explosive. depending. Depending on if it's Monday or Wednesday, we don't know which way it's going to go, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, we'll just have to see at this point. I want them to be together. I like them as a couple. 
But mm-hmm. I also understand wanting to live apart to give each other some space if that's what it's going to take for the relationship to survive. No, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Let's move on and get into some Selena tea Selena. before we put it in the teapot. So Selena Corny, she might start add a billionaire to her resume. It's possible. It might be happening. So according to Bloomberg News, she is reportedly in the process of exploring selling rare beauty. It is worth an estimated $2 billion, you Money. believe, in like five years. She reportedly mm. brought bankers in to weigh potential offers from companies. And now, while this sounds kind of shocking, it is reported that Selena would still likely re- remain involved with the business after the sale. But what do we think? I mean, she hasn't had it for very long, but I feel like if it's already worth $2 billion, that she, is what's she going to do? Yeah. That that's insane. I think that she should sell it. But I guess before I make that as a definitive statement, Madison did Kylie cosmetics kind of fall off after she sell or no? It, I think it did a little bit, but I also think the difference with Kylie and a rare is A, the ingredients of rare are much better. Mm-hmm. Um I also think Kylie always does like the different drops of like the Christmas collection, the yeah. Grinch collection, the I feel like I just haven't collection. Seen that Whereas like in a long Selena, time. yeah, she just went for like the classic staples, and that speaks quality in my opinion. As a consumer, as someone mm-hmm. who wears makeup, I'm more likely to buy because of consistency, which consistency is like my favorite word. I continually buy rare because it is the same product every time. When I buy my tube of concealer, it is the exact same as the one before. Nothing mm. funky. Whereas Kylie, we've tried a couple of the skincare products. We've tried some of the makeup. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, I mm. feel like this is making my eczema pop out. <laughs> this feels a little itchy. Like it's not. Not the eczema activator. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's not always giving what I needed to give. You know what I mean? Yeah. So would you say rare beauty stuff is more like you can trust it, it's dependable, it's your yes. mainstay, you would use it every day. But maybe I do use Kylie it every day. More, Kylie's more of like, oh, this is like a special thing. Maybe I might yes. use it for this event. Or like I yes. smell like this. Or maybe I don't have this color in my normal, whatever, whatever. Yes. That's yeah. what I think the difference is. I do think okay. also too, once Kylie sold, it did go down a little bit. But I don't even know if necessarily that's Kylie's fault. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I just don't see much about it anymore as much as, you know, we did when we were um, at our old job. No, for sure. I just feel like as long as Selena remains involved, Rare will stay at the quality it is. I feel like if she sells and backs away, there's possibility it won't be. What? ADHD question. Love Selena, obviously. Why does Kim Kardashian have skincare if Kylie has skincare? What's the difference? Uh, well, you know, they did say they're two very different audiences. Like, Kim is going more for, like, the anti-aging, a little older. Also, uh, her products are more expensive, so you need to have a little bit of a bigger bag to buy. Kylie giving Kim us that pink, that pink grapefruit Neutrogena yes. type. Yes, Kylie's okay. giving, <laughs> you're 13 and you're just now exploring. Okay. Which, actually, I can't even say that because the 13-year-olds are buying drunk elephant at Sephora these days. Yeah, so maybe Kylie's, like, the 9-year-old. You know, here's what I think. Whoa. Kylie is like the nine-year-old competitive dance girly. And I say Mm. that because that was me. You know, we wear a full face. We wear a full beat when we go on stage. And we don't necessarily need skincare, but we want to feel like we're doing skincare because we wear a lot of makeup when we go do our dance competitions. So I feel like that is Kylie's target as of right now. And Kim's just very different. I just cut on Kardashians as I was eating lunch, just a regular old episode. And Kim was like, and I'm really thinking about doing skincare. And I was like, (laughs) like, you know, when you like look up for the like, Wait, what? Why the hell Kim do that? We already got Kardashian skin skincare. But, you know, if it's two different demographics, that makes sense. That would be like if Kris yeah. Jenner came out with skincare, it obviously wouldn't be for me. Like, right. You know, exactly. She's, she's exactly. giving us that pull your face tight cream. <laughs> and I know I just gave the most <laughs> niche. I gave the most niche example. But the girlies the girls, don't catch that. They're, you're going to get it. If you've done it, you know what I mean. Can you it was a very the niche da- thing. The dance mom girls didn't want to do that. That reunion thing. They only need to do it if Abby wasn't involved. I just saw that headline. Mm-hmm. I'm so oh. here for it, though. I will be watching. Was Abby that abusive? I guess I wasn't there, so I can't speak to it. I can't speak to it. You know, I do think Abby crossed the line. And I think as she was on reality TV longer, she became more wild. She, always had to, she had to up the ante. You know what I mean? Yeah. She had to constantly up the ante. But the, prob- the moms were also not helpful in that situation. Mm. And I think the principles that Abby started on before she started really putting on a show for the cameras were very normal. Like, 
the no crying, we also had a rule of no crying. Oh, like wow. that was, and that oh, was I'm not a crier. even necessarily. Y'all kicking my, me off the team. <laughs> that was not even necessarily my dance teacher. That was like Mama Hill was just like, because my Same. mom's Same. thing was, <laughs> Your worst day might have been somebody's best day, and you mm. crying makes you look kind of like bratty and not a very good sport. You know what I mean? So that's, don't cry, girl. That's real. Whereas, like, if we cried when we got home, that's different. But my mm. mom's thing was more like, don't come off stage and fall to the ground and be dramatic and start sobbing yeah. because you messed up a one-two step. You know what I mean? Don't like, be performative. <laughs> it, that's Mama Hill's thing was like, you're a professional. Absolutely yeah. not. You know? So mm. like some of Abby's rules, I feel like. When it started, we're not that out of bounds, but then it just got out of bounds as the moms got more dramatic. They had to make good reality TV. And yeah. then the girls who came on later, like a JoJo Seawall, I mean, poor girl had no chance. Why Abby is she was, releasing a song? Yeah, Abby was going to drag her by that side ponytail for sure. She came in way too late that it was it was game over. Madison, last two minutes before we put it in the T-Bot. Yes. Did you see the valley? I did. I liked it. I'm ready to fight I, the whole world. I'm going to defend my town. I actually am intrigued. Kristen Dowdy is still unhinged. Mother! God love her. God love Ma- her. Madison, my friend is one of the one of the editors, editors on Vanderpump Rules, and he is like, girl, this is not going to be it. When I see him next, girl, I'm going to have my argument ready. This is like, finally, we're growing up. This is where y'all belong in these awful ass relationships, most of y'all fighting and going through it with your kids off to the side. I don't want to see y'all in and out of the bars. I don't want to see y'all on 50,000 trips. This is like Vanderpump Rules. It's like the perfect hybrid of Vanderpump Rules and house and Housewives. Yes, me. it is. It is. Like, I am, I like the concept of, and don't laugh, the, they, it's almost kind of like married to medicine. Because <laughs> they're really all friends. They're yeah. really all in couples. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I like that aspect of it. I'm I'm defending it down. I do want to say something, though, community. Yes. Jax is in love with Kristen, and I wish he would just admit it, and I think that they should just get married and be the ultimate supervillain couple. Jax is obsessed with Kristen Doty. Jax, please don't punch me in the face if you ever come come across this clip. My God, Corny, we're going to see him again, and I'm scared. He is in love with her. Why are you so obsessed with her and having her having a baby? Like, I get it, but, like, the extent that he so y'all so basically Kristen has this boyfriend he doesn't live in the same town that she lives in and she wants to have a baby with him long distance boyfriend that's why I say she's unhinged she is unhinged respectfully for, Jax is like going so hard on her like that's his woman Jax is this why Brittany wants you to rot in hell but but Brittany and Kristen are best friends do you know that's how crazy they, this that's would be that's why they that's why they can't be oh my God! Now Jax I'm gonna be watching. I don't care what nobody say. Jax is now, a girl. Now the next episode, I'm just gonna be watching for Jax. How could he step. not? Kristen ate that slap from Stassi for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might be devoted to her ass too. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all need to watch that one clip of Vanderpump Rules. I don't care what you do for the rest of the day. Go and look that up. Stas- Stassi slap Kristen VPR and watch Stassi get 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 gutter with it. Pow! You guys, that's literally how I got Courtney to finish watching Vanderpump Rules. I was, <laughs> that was like, good. I promise you, there is some bad girls under Season two, bad episode 13. Just trust me. It's worth the watch. It's mm-hmm. worth the watch. Get the Peacock subscription today. Okay. Exactly. Okay, Courtney, let's go ahead and finish up with our last segment and... Put it in the teapot. Today's teapot, well, today's put it in the teapot is from Christina Cat Eye. And Christina writes... Hey, Courtney and Madison, what I want to put in the teapot is this. I believe that it's extremely important for people to check in on their friends and family, because no matter how well we think we know someone, we don't truly know what they're going through. Just showing that you care enough to check in on someone can mean the entire world to them and could even save their life. Mental health is very real, and we have a responsibility to encourage each other to keep going because life truly does get better over time. Everything will be all right. And then uh, Christina also left uh, the Crisis Lifeline available, which is 988. So make sure if you uh, want to talk to someone that you write that number down, 988. Yes. Thank you, Christina. I think that that is such, honestly, a good reminder. I feel like 
Courtney and I are always talking about it takes two seconds to check in on someone. It really does. And it is key, crucial. Madison, this this particular message touched me because um, I had spoken to Delisa from The Circle recently. Shout out to Delisa. She won uh, season two, for those of you that don't know, she's an icon. I mean, she called me. Uh, we got on the FaceTime, and I hate talking on the phone, you know. I mean, she was just like, you know, I just wanted to check in on you. Like, you know I'm a mom. And, like, even though I know she's a mom, I, like, forget that she's a mother. So, like, I know that when she's reaching out to me and she's, like, really wanting to talk to me, it's because she cares. It's because she wants to check up on me. And I really do appreciate the people, you, all of my really good friends that um, just take the moment to check up on me. And I know that this year I've really been trying to get better with that um, because it's you, always yeah, I nice feel like you're doing good. Yeah. Thank you, Madison. Yeah. It's always nice to receive, but we also have to remember um, to give back because friendships are kind of like plants. And if you don't water them, they do die. So um, if you have someone that you haven't watered in a while, just send them a text. Send them a meme. Just say, hey, emojis. Mm -hmm. um, reach out. Exactly. And no matter how much time has passed, I feel like that's always the thing that I hear. It's like, well, I haven't talked to them in forever. Well, so who cares? Who They're cares? probably thinking about you too. Yeah, exactly. Reach out. Also, you guys, if there is anything you want to put in the teapot, like Christina, thank you so much again, Christina, one. for adding this. I loved it. Make sure you guys email us at toasttoteapod at gmail.com. You can also DM us on Instagram or comment below on this YouTube video. And on that note, you guys, make sure you're also following us on social media at Toast to Tea Pod on Instagram and TikTok. If you're subscribed on YouTube, make sure you like this video. Make sure your notification bell is on. If you're listening on Spotify, make sure you subscribe there and you answer the poll. You can also find me on social media at I am Madison Hill on Instagram and TikTok and Madison Hill 93 on Snapchat. Courtney? And you can follow me on Instagram at Courtney Revolution and on Twitter, TikTok, and Snapchat at Court Revolution. Thanks. Yes. All right, you guys. We love you and we'll talk to you all next time. Bye. Bye.